Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to our latest webcast that we're bringing you from Travel Weekly as part of our Roadmap to Recovery series. And I'm joined today by Chris Townsend, who is the Managing Director, UK and Ireland. Well, you'd have known him uh, at UniWorld, but um, very recently, he's also taken on other luxury brands from the Travel Corporation, uh, which you can see behind you, Chris, actually, on your on your backdrop. So welcome. Uh, how are you? I'm really well, actually. Yeah, very, very good. How are you keeping? Yeah, really good. And listen, I wanted to talk to you because it's uh, a move that the Travel Corporation made, uh, as we say, about three months ago to sort of extend your remit to look after uh, the touring brands as well as um, the river cruise brand. And also you, you're bringing in the hotels as well. So can you just first of all explain to us why that decision was taken and what your, your remit now covers? Well, we, we sort of looked at the segmentation of brands and communication of brands and New World obviously owning that luxury space in river cruise terms. We also had, uh, obviously, the, the touring brands that were um, working alongside Trafalgar and Cost Saver and went, well, hold on a second. The luxury customer is, go, is, is, is going through all these brands and also Red Carnation as well. So it just made sense to actually sort of pull all the brands in terms of luxury so we could have one conversation with a partner across all the brands. So, you know, that luxury customer is not just doing a river cruise. They're gonna stop in the finest hotels. They're gonna be traveling in the world. So actually, and they're probably gonna be traveling the world in style. So actually that sort of luxury conversation just feeds across the partners we're dealing with. Okay. So it just, it made a lot of sense to do that. All right, so yeah, and that, that does sound as if it makes sense, but practically then how is it working in your operation? Have you sort of merged all the sales teams or the marketing or the, all the functions or how, how is it working? Yeah, very much. So what we've got is um, we've, we've pulled one team together who now represent all the brands accordingly and across skill across all the brands. So the, the team now from a sales perspective, they will talk absolutely brand by brand by brand, the marketing team as well. We have dedicated people within the sales and marketing team who, who are more specialized in certain products. We've still got a back end team from a marketing point of view from the uni world and, and the touring brands as well. Uh, and then from a reservations point of view, we were already cross trained and had crossover of the brands anyway, in terms of touring and cruise. What we've just done is pull luxury cruise and luxury tours together. So now again, there'll be uni world specialists, there'll be insight and luxury goal specialist specialists. But when when calls are busy, we'll cross those uh, calls over as well. Okay, and I guess for people watching this, Chris, um, travel agents, um, yeah. has it affected the way that you you and your sales team are dealing with the trade? And I mean, does it make it easier for them, perhaps, if they've got kind of a portfolio uh, of of product that would be right for certain customers? Uh, it's been amazing. It's just, and it's been very organic. So the interesting thing is, we've not sort of been going in there and trying to drive product to partners it's just been a conversation that actually you know in, in the uni world space if you've got that relationship we're then talking about well actually what you're doing for, from a, a high-end touring point of view and, and we've been having that conversation what you're doing with the uh, global hotels so you know one minute it might start with a partner who is um you know doing a lot of business for example we're at red carnation at somewhere like milestones in south africa um, and then we move into uni world now they already know that milestones is the ultimate level uh, down in Cape Town, they'll know all about that property. So actually, it's a very easy move for them to talk about, you know, luxury gold, where we've actually got red carnation properties in there, and they're doing this concierge style touring at a different level, or then talking about UniWorld, because UniWorld is basically red carnation on the waters. So that sort of theme just runs across. And, and I guess that in this new, look, there's been, obviously during, during the last 18 months, there's been a lot of change in the industry, and, and we're seeing obviously um, partners who, who have, have you know restructured, reorganised. They've got less staff, less time, less resource. Uh, whether that be uh, you know uh, you know at, at marketing level or whatever, or or from let end level. So one conversation now goes a long way, and we can sort of have a, a really relevant conversation to understand: Have we got a fit for our products for your business? If we have, how can we develop that, and how can we work together to 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 support to support you? So it's 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 very simple, really the way it's sort of gone and, and we and we didn't go into it with a you know a full plan of action it was just let's get on the calls in in in, in this world on 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 digital and let's get on with it 
All right. I want to come and talk uh, quite a lot more about the luxury customer and the market. I know you're going to give us some insight onto that. But just before we move on, Chris, behind you, I mentioned you've got your brands and you've referenced all of them in what you've said so far. But the one you haven't referenced is the Velvet Collection. So is that, do you want to just explain what, what that is then? Because is that the sort of the umbrella brand for all of these? Yeah, it's pretty much a trade umbrella brand, but it's but as you can see, it's further down the list. So it's actually what we're concerned about is talking about brand by brand by brand. And the Velvet Collection is yeah, just more of a, a trade. You know, we're a bundle of brands under the under this roof. I'm MD of the Velvet Collection, but I'm representing all the brands. So it's you know it, it's a, it's a lower down the list thing in real terms because it's actually uh, front facing consumer. It's to understand what Uniworld's about. Um, and again, so on and so forth. So, okay. but it's useful that agents can understand which products are in that velvet collection, and all of those products are for a certain type of customer. Absolutely, which we'll, yeah. which we'll Come on to talk about, but in terms of what you want them to be promoting, that's not a brand for for consumers. That's just for their understanding of what you represent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then, let's, um, if we may, talk about the luxury consumer because you said, look, if they're going on a river cruise, they might well fancy a luxury gold tour but how much are they or have they been crossing over between your brands so far um and, and what do you think the scope is then by by bringing it all together i think if you if you look at our crossover between uniworld and red carnation that's already significant so there's there's been for years that red carnation customer understands that uniworld is that product on the water there's been cross communication on the products previously so that's, there's a real sort of synergy between those two um, and then from, from an insight and luxury gold point of view, again, it's just sort of linking those dots with our partners to actually bring, bring that to the table. It's been really interesting um, three months that the first sort of week when we took over insight and luxury gold was to really get immersed in the product, uh, really understand the competitive landscape, who was doing what and um, where did we really sit. There was also an internal reports that I had, I read them, but then I did my own research and got us stuck in and, and we sort of, really with insight uh, got a priority focus because of just timing and regionalization of what we needed to do and the interesting thing when i spoke to partners about insight uh, was that there was a real sort of gap an opportunity in the marketplace for luxury and we were talking usa specific by the way so it's looking at usa as a priority and when we spoke to them about it they just went this is just ticking our box and actually there's nobody doing what you're doing which I'd sort of figured out to an extent, but to speak to 30 partners, plus, 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 each one just reconfirmed that when we talked about the USPs and about where we stood in the marketplace. So I think we just needed to be, to talk. I talk black and white, Lucy. It's just straight to the point. There's no fluff. It's, this is what we do. Does it work or not? And, 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 and every shot on time. And But that resonation was that I've, Insight uh, had this this space that wasn't, uh, that, that the trade, can engage with and really get behind and they wanted so we sort of developed a whole plan for usa assets communication that really talks about insight at a different level possibly than we were before and it's we've got to cut through without allowing you to do a full sales pitch because we won't have we won't have time but if people are joining this and they perhaps aren't aware chris of your, yep. what you offer i mean maybe you could just pull out a couple of the usps but also could you just explain to us where insight differs from luxury gold and if you've made any changes at all because obviously both those brands have been a, around a while and i wonder you know with everything we've been through have you slightly tweaked what the offering is at all we've got um we certainly have new products being developed on, on an ongoing basis um, and i say really we've been ultra focused on insight because you know to do something properly and efficiently we can't be juggling too many things so we've gone very insight heavy at first there is a space for luxury gold and we're going to uh, develop that but i think in, in real terms i mean again from a usa focus that if you look at you know we do have the most premium inclusive products out there and luxury gold is just the, the pinnacle of touring if you want the, the best of the best that's what we have but you know um and and i think that in the travel industry having been in travel industry for 30 years we are everybody's luxury everybody's this that and the other and the agent gets confused our partners get confused the poor customer gets confused i think that the the, the travel industry is it's, it's very poor at that that everybody over there's a lot of over marketing so you know insight is there um we've probably been marketing but not shouting from the rooftops what we are 
And now we are shouting from the rooftops what we are and communicating that in a very clear and concise way. So if you look at USA, that you know, you know, great hotels, best locations. So you, you you're literally you're stopping into amazing properties, whether you're in, you know, and again, brand new product, the Intercontinental downtown in LA is absolutely stunning. You know, Fairmont in Washington, the Hyatt Regency in Frisco, or if you go about the national parks, and this is quite a key thing that you know we have um, as part of the Travel Corporation. Um, you know, behind the scenes, uh, a lot of DMCs, we've got one of the biggest DMCs in America. So our buying power is significant. So we can buy um, space at the national park year round where most can't. So we actually stop in the national parks where others don't. And actually that makes a big difference because if you're two nights in Yosemite or one night in Grand Canyon or wherever you um, being in the park and stopping in that lodge is different than stopping 100 miles away. But people go, will go and visit for the day with other operators, but you're not there immersed in it and you might get a couple of hours. So these small things that don't seem to sort of, we're, we just need to communicate them better in real terms and talk about that and talk about the immersive experiences well, that we have. It's very much like with river cruising, when you find that actually that the river cruise says it's in the city, but it's actually quite some far, you know, it's yeah, yeah. Depends which berth you've got. Some of them are right in the city and you can step off them and go into the city and some of them you find actually they're, they're a little way away. So I guess it's similar to that. But the point I want to ask then is you say you're now, you haven't perhaps shouted about it enough before you are now. Yeah. How are you, you know, you know, how, what does that look like when you say you're shouting about it? Uh, you know, because agents do need to know that that is yeah. you see it's small things, but actually that's quite crucial, isn't it? If they're yeah. selling so, a trip at this price point. So absolutely. They, they need to understand why, they're going to pay hundreds of pounds more plus to, to go on the, on this experience. And, and some of the trends I'll talk about in a minute play out to, the, to that. People are spending more and coming back in, in that way. But I think that, you know, it's, it's training that's just designed for, for, for the agent. It's no fluff. Let's just get to the point and the key points about what, what makes us different, you know. Um, so we're sort of bringing in that to the fore and actually understanding it from, from the travel agency. What, 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 what does a travel agent need to know and get across? So, it, there's no fluff train that's been redesigned to communicate that absolutely um and you know i think that it's difficult to not talk about it without talking about the usps i guess that you know if you look at again with insight that we have an on-road team of three uh, with 24 hour seven uh, 24 7 support so an on-road team of three is completely different level uh, than than what's going on in the general marketplace that's about seamless service different level uh, provided uh, and about that sort of having the, the team behind it, that we've got offices all around the state, again, unique in terms of what we've got. So that sort of is inbuilt in there. Um, and through to the, you know, again, talking about the immersive experiences that are different, that are included. There's a lot of, you know, coffee and brochures that sort of talk about, you can do this, this and this, or you do a normal tour. Well, we don't do normal tours. We do immersive experiences. That, again, they're different, you know, whether you're in, I don't know, uh, Cape Cod and you do, you know, you're doing, uh, America's Cup sailing or you're crossing ranches or you're crossing California doing three Amtrak journeys on California again those product enhancements are just included in our, in our package so we've just got to make that cut through so people understand that it is a more wrapped up package in a different quality to hotels and the service is different level yeah and you say that no fluff training is being redesigned at the moment when will agents be able to get their hands it, on or it's, it's, it? it's now it's, it's, I actually saw it this morning, so um, we, we're actually, um, and it's it just gets concise, it gets to it, you know, and it, and it actually talks in that training about conversations we'd have a, with product directors or MDs about the state of the market, about what's going on in terms of trends, about people upgrading on on mass basis. Now, so we're just telling the res guys that actually this is happening. So actually, when that customer comes through your door, that actually you know properly they've got this significantly more money in the bank and they want to do it properly because they're not travel for three years long haul or what have you. So it's, you know, giving that rest team the tools in addition to just talking about the product. Yeah, uh, it's about position in the marketplace. Absolutely. Now, you you mentioned then that um, let, let's come on to the, the market and the customer then and what, what yeah. the demand is like, what they're looking for, where they are wanting to travel to and for how long, etc. Yeah. Because you know, you were saying there that people have perhaps got a bit more money to spend, they're prepared to spend a bit more money. So tell us what you're seeing in terms of, I don't know if you're taking many bookings, but if you are for, you know, when and where. Yeah, I, I guess just rewinding back just when I, when I was just Uniworld, we went through 
how do you put it? We, we traded strongly during COVID from last April that we weren't yeah. in, we were in book and confidence mode, but we were in a proactive marketing mode, working with our partners to get the business that was there. We hit January, February, and we took a view to focus on long haul because of the jabs going in the arm and because of people um, of that 65 year old market, they want to do these longer itineraries, the long haul, do them now. Um, so we saw, saw those trends playing out. We saw that trend playing out in terms of longer itineraries being booked as well. So for example, if we look at Uniworld at the moment, we're booking a load of two week France back to back cruises. We've never done that before. It was always one week French cruises. All of a sudden we've got a surge on this business. So those things are playing out. So as a result of that, we're going out and marketing that and communicating that like we never have before. Uh, if we look in terms of the general sort of touring market, and again, I just want to speak to key, key partners, uh, existing partners, I want to speak to new partners and also Uniworld customers about the sort of general views of, of, um, of touring when we talk about USA for insight. And the big thing with those sort of USA uh, partners was that they were seeing average selling prices increase between 25 and 30% uh, from previous. Never seen it before. This is, this is unique. I've never seen this happen before. I've seen markets go and come back, but I've not seen markets go and come back and increase in terms of average selling price. Definite trend, and this is 30 plus key players, big operators who are, who are saying the same thing. And it was just like, well, it was like, a, this is unique, and we've just got, you know, and we've got the product to fulfill that need. You have, and do you think this is a short lived, you know, people have not spent last year, and so they've saved up a bit of money, so their next holiday is going to be. You know, and then it might tail off again, or do you think this is? No, I don't think it's short lived. I think people are just, life is short. Let's go back and and enjoy it. Let's just, why would I spend, why would I say a few hundred quid on that tour or cruise or that stay in a hotel? And actually, you know what? Let's just do it properly. Um, And let's just spend the money and and enjoy ourselves and and let's not scrimp and scrape. So I think that's just playing out. Hugely. I mean, the, the partners and operators you're speaking to, Lucy, I'm sure would, would say very similar yeah. picture, but, it, but it's playing out. Just it's there, it's happening. You're it's seeing cool. that on river cruise because people are taking longer river cruises, and then yeah. in terms of your tours, they definitely yeah. want to say that they're, they're yeah. upgrading. Yeah. So, so, so there's, a, there's a myriad of products in the marketplace that, you know, suit, suits a certain audience. But that odd, you know, and, and actually where we were within San Luxury Gold, we had a certain segment, but there's not there's an upgrading of that mid-level customer, upgrading and spending a few hundred quid more. So you're getting those. new, but you're getting you're seeing new business coming in then where you've got partners that are saying, actually, here's somebody that's got a bit more to spend now. They want a little bit more luxury and they're bringing them to, to insight. Absolutely. And we're supporting those partners. I think is the critical path thing. You know, this is this is about full support for, for, for those partners that you know, once we've identified there's a good relationship and this is a good opportunity and it makes sense from them and we're not, you know, we're not trying to force anything. If it doesn't make sense, let's let's move on and you, you sell a different product. But where the product where the where the product is right for our partners, we then sit down and we and we and we we've got a full support pack. So this is a you know, so again, you know, it, it fits across insight and, and uniworld, but we've got brand new brochures, digital brochures, which are a fully white label. Uh, pieces so uh, we supply all that to our partners um uh, is that can you hear that that's my dog going off with uh, that, but, it's so, not that. <laughs> uh, but so so we've got this this white label brochure now in, within these white label brochures uh, we've produced specific uk content uh, accordingly and also videos so videos are specific to the uk market so whether that be a, a two or three minute video on a specific tour or insight or a 10 minute video walking through where next on Uniworld. Uh, we've got all these things embedded in there. So this is not an interactive brochure that's, you know, that's not been developed in, for the UK. This is specific for our market. So we also do off the back of that, we've got the staff training that's brand new. We've got then um, uh, digital events with, with to their customers. So we actually sort of partner with our partners and we go out and do these digital events. And again, talk the cut through. So actually the customers there want to know yeah, I do want to come back. I do want to understand. I want to understand why uh, this is luxury. I want to understand why I should pay a bit more to go on this tour. And is this the right fit for me? Um, and again, and also within their talking, touring specific, talking the touring benefits as well, which I think has been one of the, um, you know, the, the opportunities that we see. You know, I see the, the, the amount of fly drive business that happens on touring that actually 
is that sort of 60, 65 year old customer wanting to do a two week tour on a self drive basis or not? And when you start having those questions, people actually probably not because you know going on a do you think that's changed because of the pandemic that people are now thinking mm, do you know what i'd rather yeah. have, i'd rather be looked after now yeah and, and it's selling the benefits again of, of those things so if you look at our you know you look at the luxury coaches that we have you know uh, customized and designed by us 40 seats versus 55 on average this is uni so uni world and, and insight and luxury gold is a, is a theme that runs through that if you look at uni world We've got the same size ships, but on average we've got 120, 130 guests versus 180. That that space means more restaurants and more bars and more luxury. Same on the on, on the coaches. Actually, if I'm doing hundreds of miles on a tour or thousands of miles, then actually my personal space is quite significant. It is for me. Actually, I want a bit of space and I don't want to be put in. And if you look at the the averages, 55 on a normal coach tour, we've designed our coach with 40 seats on average 33. So actually, we're going to have circa 30 to 40 percent less people on board that coach with three people looking after them with business style seat pitch with panoramic windows and wi-fi and all the rest of it so these things when you're on the tour it's it's a number of jigsaw pieces that we've got to pull together and try and get that through training and through to the end yeah. consumer so they get it why, why, why am i going in, in style it is a different it's a different product yeah different proposition and i mean you mentioned they're just about to your partners because you keep mentioning you you know you're yeah. providing these white label brochures and the training and you know the events for their customers etc which is all fantastic you know are you also looking to find new agents as well yeah. that might have you know that you don't even know about at the moment that might have the type of customer that is just perfect for this totally we we, we... We've got a, uh, we have a um, list that we're, that we're working through. We've spoken to a load of new partners that, that could this be the right fit? We've got a crossover from UniWorld. Uh, again, some of our UniWorld existing partners are actually the touring product. This is now a, a great opportunity. Red Car Nation can fit in and stuff like that. So there is a load of new partners we're speaking to as well. Okay. Because it is, it, is the, it is the right fit. Uh, that consumer is there. And uh, we, we just come speak to them and talk, and, talk them through. And perhaps customers who pre-pandemic might not have considered something like a river cruise or or a high-end tour no and it's funny i've just come off a call with uh, <laughs> another partner just literally before this call and it was part of the conversation was actually we touched upon fly drive we touched upon touring and and, we, and by the end of the call they're going yeah we're missing a trick here by a mile because actually there's a default position that you know a, a lot of people will oh, let's put that fly drive or let, let's book that tour well actually no these things are happening. And I was speaking to partner the other day and they were saying they had uh, some of the last year, so this was pre my time, but he won this, you know, um, retiree came in and wanted, wanted a Chevy uh, convertible and he wanted to go around uh, west coast of America. Um, anyway, they, they booked him and, and, and did it and they booked him top hotels. Uh, they booked him top hotels um, and he did it, but he said he was scared witless throughout the itinerary about scratching his car and parking his car and doing all these things. Um, and then he's getting to the hotel, he's getting, his, you know, having to, you know, get his own bags out and join the big queue line and all the rest of it. So actually, when you take in the, the touring deliverables across ourselves and, and, and other operators in the marketplace, you know, we've just got to sell that story better as well, because actually uh, to, to default to fly drive is not the way to go. Uh, but but it but it goes that way and and again I was a I was a travel agent I was a tour operator yeah and people uh, have yeah. that you know it's a bit of a bucket list particularly as you say in the states it's like oh I'm going to do a US fly drive yeah. but you're yeah. saying yeah. perhaps we just need to get people but but, to but, but that that, that look but that luxury agent said at the end of the, uh, you know when when, we, when they told us the story she said actually no I put you guys up by a mile now and I just send him for a night or two nights in it to get it out of his system to get his picture taken with his convertible and he's done it tick one of the bucket lists. Yes. And then, yeah. and then and then it goes on one of our tours so that's actually makes sense doesn't it actually look yeah. at it and think about it so i think it's just you know um and the great thing again with the people we're working with they are the experts in that so we're not trying to be the tour we don't want to be the tour operator we want you know you know if people are going to, to the states they're not just going to book a tour with with insight or luxury gold they're going to you know pre and post it they want to do other things so again the partners can put those things together and be the, the experts that they are in that space Okay. Just before we go, Chris, let's just can I just talk to you about um, destinations, particularly. Yep. We've obviously talked a lot about the US, which is, is still, you know, we don't know when it's going to open up. Um, people are talking about more towards the end of September, but um, we've now got 
more travel happening to amber destinations of course like to, can you just tell me how, where you are in terms of your programs and the yeah. cu countries that you're now confidently selling to or when you know, just just explain where you are but it must be a nightmare i imagine running businesses in this situation it's tricky but the, the good thing we're, we're a global business so you know uh, domestic travel or european you know if you, if you look at again you know you look at australia so again we've got australia inbound but we've got australian operators there that are now selling australia products same in the states we've got a, a massive yeah. a massive domestic boom going on uh, from our operators selling americans to american in terms of in terms of the opportunities for brits from when and to where where yeah what? so for, from a uk point of view obviously it depends on our crazy government rules and what's what's sort of new and what isn't new i mean obviously france was was very strong for us until last friday night and then 8 30 we're into action about you know what's the, the outbound communication and again so you know we've moved people from france to portugal uh we're hopefully italy will sort of come to the table and you know change their five day five day quarantine rule so we're just being very very flexible with everything we do um and looking you know first and foremost looking at after the guest and what they want to do so we've done that all the way through this pandemic that the guest is firm is, is is the main focus and we'll do whatever to to get them on the right holiday at the right time whether it be this year or into next year or into 23 which we're also on sale for 23 as well so um you know the the uk i mean again just coming on this call today i think there's conversations i mean obviously there's is is greece and spain going to be the next one to go on this amber plus list yeah uh, that, that seems to be possibly where it goes so it's just changing all the time and it's just being very connected with with uh with it with our, with our customers so to give them the offering and to be on the ball with it really as much as we can so the, for the majority of your bookings are 22 23 are they yeah, yeah. so well, although you're having to move a few people and stuff it's not i mean i don't i mean what 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 is your order book like for the yeah, 2021 yeah, yeah, yeah. The order book now for 21 is is still we've still got departures going on um from you know september onwards we've just had yeah. a, a complete rebook because of france that, that yeah. literally that's just changed so this this priority this start of this week was to speak to all those french customers give them various offerings and, and do that and so that that's where it's been so our, our focus for months has been 2022 okay. has been those long-haul destinations because yeah. again the, the, you know there is people there is people people want to travel well, again, just the, the ever ending scenario, what we're seeing day by day, week by week is, is, is making it more difficult. But 22 and 23 is there and, and is strong. So the reality is we believe that 22 is going to be a hugely big year. And 23 is already seeing, seeing signs of early sales as well without us even marketing it properly. So, I mean, the reality with 22 is that it will sell out because there's only so much supply. And people are understanding now. I've got to get that booked in and, and make sure I'm in that cabin or on or on that tour. So um, yeah, we're we're in, we're in a, a decent position for 22. And I guess because it's been so tough for everyone, there's a danger, isn't there, that you're just focusing on the immediate issues. But how much have you been able to look ahead and perhaps change strategies? I mean, obviously you've you've done what we talked about right at the start you've you know slightly re restructured haven't you in terms of what you're looking after and the teams that report yeah. into you so that's one thing but looking ahead in whether it's product or you know other things that you might be looking at have we got are you still sort of innovating and you've got things coming up it, this this business is is crazy in terms of innovation and development i mean i, I saw your interview with uh, ellen the other week my boss uh, at uniworld and it, you know and and she's just on it all the time it's what's next what's next what's yeah. next and and the conversations some of the internal conversations we have that don't quite sort of come to fruition uh, are unbelievable but it's, it's pure innovation in terms of what they're trying to do and, and where it's trying to go and then you take that to the power of um the, the three businesses i now work for in, in, or four businesses that actually you've got three different ceos where you're feeding in and, and developing and if you look at again insight and luxury gold they've got brand new product developments for, for 22 so this has not been a time to sit still and go we'll just roll out the same product this has been about innovation and about focus and you know even with insight now we've got three brand new tours for, for, for 22 in usa and canada so those are about let's let's completely look at what people are after and take that to the next level uh, yeah. red carnation you're looking at you know again edinburgh and dublin in development you know um 
and again it's just it's just an ever developing piece so this this business doesn't stand still um, and everything is focused on and again ultimately delivering the best product so you mentioned three ceos there chris and um yeah. you're going to try and get them together aren't you to so we can perhaps hear from them and get pick their brains on some of this innovation that they've got up their sleeves yeah i mean i don't think it's ever been done before but i mean again we're in a, a unique position of actually having um three ceos you know the best in hotels the best in touring and the best in river cruise so let's bring them all together and let's do an event so we're going to do that probably in september in london We'll invite all our key trade partners down, and um, yeah, absolutely. They, they they have got this this knowledge, this the new steps that are coming around the corner, the new developments that are coming around the corner as well. So we thought that'd be really engaging to the trade, and again, you know, so you know, we could talk about what's going on, talk about the trends, uh, and also do an open Q and A. So you know, ask them questions, go for it, because these guys, you know, they're, 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 you know, and I'm very lucky to work with three amazing people. Who are absolutely, you know, at the top of the game and, and want to develop the product. So, uh, very lucky to, to to work in this sector and also for this business. All right. Well, listen. We wish you the best in your. I know you've been doing it for three months on the quiet. Yes. Which we wanted to talk to you about it because I think it is important for agents to understand now how you're positioning things and how you're going to support them yeah. to really promote these kind of products in a kind of post-COVID world and how how that can help them with their sales. So. We wish you all the best. Thank you so much for joining us today. And maybe you could invite us along to these, this event with the three CEOs. because I think we'd like to report on that too. I, I might be a sneaky in Lucy, maybe. All right, good. All right, thanks so much, Chris. Good stuff. Thanks, Lucy. Cheers. Cheers.